If you watch my channel, you know I'm always on the lookout for vintage, unbuilt electronic kits. Especially ones where the box has never been opened. And that's exactly what I have for you today. Inside this box is a never-before-opened kit to build a Dynaco SCA80Q amplifier. The SCA80 amplifier was introduced around 1970, and this Q version came out about a year or two later. What makes it a Q? No, not conspiracies. The Quadapter. The Quadapter was Dynaco's accessory box box which could create surround effects years before Quadraphonic was introduced. It did this by extracting out-of-phase stereo signals and required the user to add two additional rear speakers. The Q version of the SCA80 simply has the Quadapter circuitry built into the amp. We'll get more into that in future episodes, but for now, let's see what's in the box. Okay, here we have the original box for the SCA80Q. Let's get it opened and see what's inside. Check out the label, Dynaco 4-Dimensional Amplifier, SCA80Q. Flip it around, Let's see what else we have here. Looks like there's uh, a label. Yeah, it looks like this is the original shipping label. It's from a company with the initials SD, or maybe that's the name of the company, SD, at 6730 Santa Barbara Court in Baltimore, Maryland. And it was sent to, I don't see the first name, but it looks like somebody with the last name of Walker, uh, something something lane in something Bourne Beach, Florida. Okay, I'm gonna slide the box over here now and attempt to remove the contents. Okay, I can see the face plate. Looks like it's in good shape. Let me pull this all out so you can see. Let's move the styrofoam to the side. Here's our faceplate looking in, I think in good condition. Uh, looks like I got scratched a little bit here. Let's take the plastic off and take a closer look. Ah, yeah, that's too bad. We have some scratches here. Not sure how that happened. It looks like the way it was packed, the faceplate was face up. So we've got some dings here. Oh, and it's bent as well. Ah, that is disappointing. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of it. Here's our assembly manual. Let's flip through it real quick. Looks like an addendum here for the printed circuit board instructions. Um, perhaps that date, 1172, could be November 72. A nice big pictorial diagram. And hopefully when we're done, we'll have something that looks like this. I was just looking for a date on this manual and I still don't see any, so still trying to pin down the exact date of this particular unit. So it looks like all the parts are packed inside the cabinet. You can see this is the actual cabinet here with the back panel. Let's flip it over. Here's the top of the unit. Looks like the case itself is in good shape. I don't see any rust so far. That's a good sign. Let's take the lid off and see what we have for parts. Just looking a little closer for signs of rust, and I still don't see any. Again, a great sign. This must be the transformer. Let's take a closer look. Wow, yeah, in really good shape. I don't see any signs of corrosion or rust at all. Excellent. Let's open up the SC80 PC box. Oh boy, these PC boards are already assembled. That's a little disappointing. Oh well, at least we'll have a chance to replace these electrolytics. I'm sure after testing them, they'll reveal that they need to be replaced. Let's put this board over here. Another fully built board. And yet another. Yeah, I gotta say, this is disappointing. Let's take a look inside this parts box. Hopefully there's some work for us to do. Oh, 
Okay, there's one board we need to build at least. Looks like this is going to be on the power supply with those big resistors and diodes. This package says SCA existors. I'm guessing that's for more transistors. Let's take a look. Yeah, these are the big power transistors, two matched pairs. Let's set those aside. And in this package, we have some hardware. Let's open this up and dump it out. I always like to open these packages very gently. Instead of ripping them open, I pry off the staples so I can keep the package in good shape. Try to gently remove those staples. Okay. Let's dump the hardware in here. Okay, lots of miscellaneous hardware. We can see there's a fuse, some nice brass pieces too. Put that over here. Let's open up these parts for the power supply. Nice looking board. Let me see if I see a date on here. Uh, nope, still no date. These resistors and diodes are likely to be fine, but we'll test everything before we put the kit together. Some more miscellaneous parts. Okay, more resistors, some electrolytics, a couple of ceramic capacitors. Again, these will all have to be tested before we put the kit together. I often find that the most time consuming part of building these old kits is testing and replacing the old components. I can almost guarantee you that testing will reveal that many of these parts are no longer good. That'll be especially true with the old electrolytics and perhaps with some of these resistors as well. Let's continue our excavation into the box. What do we have here? Uh, this looks like a maybe a multi-section capacitor, electrolytic? Mm, no, maybe not. Ah, actually it's a control switch. Okay, a selector switch, probably for selecting inputs or modes or speakers. We'll find out more later. Let's put that in here. And don't mind the writing on these bowls. You can see I reused them, and here I have from a previous uh, project from original Ampex. So, no, this is not an Ampex. Okay, now these big guys... These uh, filter capacitors, um, again, most likely these are going to test badly and we will be replacing these. I had briefly looked over the instructions for this kit online earlier and I noticed that they had instructions to wind this coil of wire around these capacitors, but looks like they've already done that work for us here. What do we have here? Looks like heat sinks for our big power transistors. Indeed. Yeah, pretty beefy, and those will go with these transistors here. I can't remember the rated power output for this amp. It's an 80. Does that mean it's 40 watts per channel? Let me check the manual real quick. Well, it looks like it's rated for 30 watts continuous average power per channel. So it's a 30 watt per channel amplifier. Bench is getting pretty filled up here. Okay, what's next in the goodie box? Wire. Lots of wire. Uh, some nice control knobs. Yeah, these are actually cast aluminum, machined aluminum, I guess. Uh, very nice. Yeah, there's our multi-section electrolytic. Yeah, we'll probably won't be using this, but you never know. We'll test it. Actually, to tell you the truth, even if this tests fine, eh, there's no way I'm going to use this. This will have to be replaced. Some mounting bands for our electrolytics. Not sure what size we'll be replacing these with, so we may or may not be able to use these. We'll see. Okay, now it looks like just a bunch of uh, controls, potentiometers, switches. There's a phono plug for the inputs. Looks like a terminal here for the speakers. There's our AC cord. You can see it's not grounded and it's not even polarized, so this is definitely a product of the late 60s, early 70s. More of those beautiful aluminum knobs that Dynaco is known for. Very nice. Rocker switch. I believe this is for the power. Another one here. Well, one of these is for the power. Actually, it looks like there are one, two, three, four, five rocker switches. Let's put our switches in there. There's our headphone jack. Looks like this jack is set up to automatically disengage the speakers when the headphone plug is inserted. I'm gonna put all the potentiometers in this bowl. And maybe the switches too. Yeah. 
Ah, this is the rocker switch for the power, and we can see it's illuminated, so yeah, it's lit. Looks like a neon light, and we can see the resistors all built into one nice little package. Very nice. Not quite sure what this is for. Put that there. Headphone jack. Okay, let's put all these terminals into a separate bowl. And let's see, put the fuse holder in there. And uh, two AC accessory jacks that go in the back. Uh, I'm not sure if these are switched or not. Uh, perhaps we'll find out later. Put those in there. This is the heat shrink compound for the transistors. Imagine that after all these years, this compound still looks to be usable. It's not dried out at all. Let's put these with our power transistors. Okay, more miscellaneous wire. Let's put all of our wire in this bucket here for now. Okay, what else, what else? Okay, and it looks like this is the mount for the multi-section electrolytic. Let's put these together. Actually, let's put all of our large capacitors together in this bucket for now. Another piece of hardware to match the other one. Not quite sure what these two do. Let's stick them in there for now. Here's an Allen wrench they provided, probably to secure the knobs. Uh, we won't be needing this for a while. Let's put this and the knobs all together. Parts box is empty. Let me lay out this mess now so we can get a better look at everything. Well, I certainly hope all of you can appreciate the trouble I went through to get this beautiful shot. All these parts nice and neatly organized and aligned, nice and straight. Honestly, I think I must have spent a half an hour to get all these components nice and straight and organized. And right after this scene, I'm going to take all this down and put it in a shelf somewhere so I can actually start building this thing. I gotta say, I'm really disappointed with this faceplate. One of the really nice things about getting an unbuilt Dynaco or Heathkit is that the faceplate is usually in great shape. It hasn't been out in the elements for the last 30, 40 years, collecting dust and getting fingerprints and scratches. But this one is not in great shape. This bend in the corner particularly has me concerned. I'm hoping we can bend that back into shape. And hopefully, too, we can polish out some of these uh, burrs and nicks and this uh, shiny part of the band here in the top and the bottom. So crossing fingers, we can um, get this looking better. Now, I know the Dynaco SC80 dates back to the early 70s, and I believe they sold these amplifiers uh, until the early 80s. This Q version of the amplifier, which features this four-dimensional effect, dates a little bit later. I think this was introduced probably mm, 71, 72 thereabouts. And this kit seems to have been put together around 1978. How do I know that? Well, there are a few tricks you can use to help date a component such as this. And the most reliable is to look for date codes on the components, particularly the capacitors. For example, let's take a look at this multi-section capacitor. And if you look down on the bottom, hopefully you can see that in the camera, there's a code there that says 7808. And that most likely indicates that this capacitor was made on the eighth week of 1978. Let's take a look at some of the other components. This time, let's look at the transistors. Here you can see another code, 7804. Again, indicating that this transistor was made on the fourth week of 1978. Let's take a look at the transformer. Here we can see the code 7708, eighth week of 1977. On this electrolytic, we can see the code 7701, dating it to the first week of 1977. So we're getting a lot of dates from 1977 and 1978, so I think it's a pretty good assumption that this kit was made around 1978. And while it's a lot of fun and a great privilege to be the first person to open up the box in 43 plus years, the problem is some of these components, again, are going to need to be replaced. And I'm actually going to go ahead and replace all of the electrolytics for this kit. Some of the replacements I have in stock, but many I'm going to need to order. And that might take a while. So we're going to wrap up this video for now. Please stay tuned for the next episode when hopefully all of my replacement parts have arrived. And we'll go through and test some of these components and start building our kit. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you soon. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.